Burgoyne's loss at Saratoga, all eyes turned to the British commander-in-chief, William Howe. Howe's failure to support Burgoyne led to calls in London for his resignation, and in May of 1778, he was replaced by General Henry Clinton. Realizing that he was engaged in a war of attrition with Washington and the mid-Atlantic states, Clinton turned to the American South. The colonies of Georgia and the Carolinas had long been a haven for loyalists, and if Clinton could appeal to them to fight, he could build a Tory army and engage Washington from a southern front. Clinton also appealed to the South's large slave population, promising them emancipation in return for military service in His Majesty's Army. Ships carrying troops began to arrive near Savannah in the winter of 1778. While the ships anchored off the shore of the city, another force of troops landed some distance from it. They crossed a number of swamps, and they quickly took Savannah. Nine months later, the British would have to hold the city against a combined French and American force. And despite the heavy military bombardment from French ships, the city held, and the Continental forces were repulsed. It was one of the bloodiest battles of the Revolution. In the North, Washington was dealing with both triumphs and challenges. He had acquired two skilled subordinates in the French Marquis de Lafayette and the Prussian General Friedrich von Steuben. Lafayette worked tirelessly to ensure that French aid flowed to the colonial cause, and von Steuben set a standard of training that greatly improved the fighting capabilities of the American soldier. With South Carolina now in British hands, a huge redcoat force left New York on New Year's Day of 1780. Its target was Charleston, South Carolina. As with the attack of Savannah, a British expeditionary force was landed south of Charleston, and they moved inland to cut the city off. Under the command of Colonel Banaster Tarleton, the British took a bridge at Monk's Corner, which led into the city, cutting it off from the mainland. After a month of heavy siege, Charleston fell, leaving the British in control of two of the South's major ports. Tarleton would go on to play an important role in the Southern Campaign. At the Battle of Waxhaws, later that spring, Tarleton earned the name Bloody Ban after slaughtering Continental troops. Despite the fact that the Americans had surrendered after being defeated, Tarleton's dragoons shot them down where they lay, and this became known as Tarleton's Quarter, and Tarleton became a ruthless villain to the colonial cause. As the British established themselves in the Carolinas, men began to join up the Loyalist cause, Many of these came from the western back country of the states and the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. General Charles Cornwallis was put in charge of this growing band of troops, and he began to move his army northward from Charleston. Now, in August of 1780, north of the town of Campton, South Carolina, his forces met against a larger colonial force under Horatio Gates, the hero of Saratoga. Gates' behavior at the Battle of Camden was bewildering. He set inexperienced militia troops up against veteran British soldiers, placed his headquarters too far away from the battle to give effective orders, and worst of all, fled the battle, running for an incredible three days when his troops began to break. Now, the battle lasted only for about an hour, and it was one of the worst defeats of the American army. In October of 1780, two militia forces would face off at King's Mountain. Now, the only British-born soldier at that battle was Scotsman Patrick Ferguson, who was a highly capable young officer who had invested himself in training his militia troops to act as an elite unit. Now, hearing of the rebel advance, Ferguson set up on top of the South Carolina hilltop, and while holding this high ground was generally a sound military practice, King's Mountain was steep, rocky, and wooded. Now, the militia approaching Ferguson were experienced guerrilla fighters, but Ferguson was resolute, and he mounted his horse, donned his favorite checkered coat, and he prepared for the onslaught. The rebels charged, and they were driven back with bayonet charges. However, they slipped away into the trees after each charge and reformed for another assault. Slowly, the rebels began to take the heights, and by their third assault, they had the Loyalists hemmed in. Now, when Ferguson was shot down by a volley of fire, the hopelessly trapped Loyalists surrendered. Now, after the battle, the rebels showed their own version of Tarleton's quarters, and they knifed and hung a number of their Tory prisoners. Now, continuous small guerrilla assaults were beginning to wear down the British, and it made it particularly hard to control the territory away from the coast. Also, the decision to offer freedom to slaves was instrumental in alienating many of the Loyalist plantation owners, who, seeing their livelihood threatened, either chose to remain neutral or crossed over to the rebel cause. Now I'm going to go over a few of the rules that are optional to the advanced game, um, specifically the bateau rules and the force march rules. Bateaus are just small boats or rafts or galleys. They can be either used to move up and down rivers or they can be used as ferries. Unlike land units, these bateaus are not moved through hex sides, but rather along hex sides. So if you wanted to say move this bateau here, you would move it, uh, let's say it's got 15 movement. So it's going to go one, and then it's going to go along this hex side. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and it could end up here. So that's as far, and then you can you uh, rotate it to 
show. Let me get it rotated here. Rotate right. Come on. We're getting it here. And um, man, I go all the way around. You see the little V here? That's an arrow pointing to where you're going to be. They can be used to transport units and they can carry up to five strength points in the bateau or they can carry up to five of the non-strength point units. They could carry five of these supply markers or they could carry three supply markers and two artillery markers. Unit in order to board has to be no more than two hexes away. So this one could move and it could go one, two, and so now it's under the bateau. You put them under the bateau and then we could move that full 15 down to here. Now the bateaus can move across these these small rivers, they can move across the medium rivers like the Roanoke down here, and they can move along these coastal rivers. Uh, they can't, uh, according to the rules, they can't move outside on the coastlines themselves. I, it's kind of hard to tell what's a coastline and what's a coastline river. So I'm going to say they, I let them move. They can move all the way around if they want along the coastlines. I'd say they can't move into ocean hexes and they can't move into any hex that has a ship in it. They do have to drop off the uh, unit at the end of the movement. So the unit has to go ashore. And any time they drop off a unit, the unit can't keep moving. It has to stop at that point. They can also move past river hexes that have uh, enemy units in a fort. Forts don't have any influence on them. However, if the unit is not in a fort, then they do have to stop at that unit. And then you'd have to disembark and then fight if you wanted to. Now, bateaus can also be used as ferries. And here we've got one being used as a ferry. Now, across the class one rivers, there's no crossing penalty, so they act as a ford or a bridge. So this guy, if he was, say, let's put the bateau here, right here, and this guy wanted to move, he could move one, two, uh, oh, okay, here, we'll move him here, one, two, three, like that. Uh, if they're on these uh, larger rivers, the uh, class two rivers, then it counts as a well, only cost a movement point to cross. So this guy could go one, two, three to get across. And then if they're down here on these major uh, inlets and rivers, then they, they cost two points to cross. So one, two, three to get across there. Uh, bateaus can be destroyed at any time um, or captured just like any other non-military units. So if a uh, red coat here moves onto this one, they can capture that bateau or they can simply be destroyed and you just get rid of the uh, unit when you want to do that. So force marches are pretty easy. Uh, you figure out how far you want to go and in movement points. And so let's say this guy, we want to move him 10 movement points. So that's going to be three additional movement points he needs. You roll a d6, and then you're going to check it out on this force march table. So if he rolled three here, I mean, if we wanted to move an extra three, we would roll, and if I got a 1 or 2, I could move the extra 3. In other words, I could move the 10 movement points. If I rolled a 3, I could go 9 movement points. And if I rolled a 4, 5, or 6, I could I could not move any further movement points. I would get no further ones. Now, let's say I wanted to move an additional 4. Um, you're going to notice that these have a 1 half E. So if I, if I move, wanted to move a total of 11 movement points, that's an additional 4, and I rolled a 3, then I can go um, 10 movement points because I can move an extra three, plus I get a one half elimination. So that's the number of casualties I take. So basically I would have to eliminate half of the units there. Uh, it wouldn't affect this one, this one seven here, but if I had say a two seven, I would have to change that to a one seven. And say, let's say you wanted to remove a full 14 movement points here. And I rolled, let's, let's just make it this. Okay, I've got these two. I want to roll them, I want to move them 14 movement points. I roll a 3, so they would be able to move 10, because 7 plus 3 is 10, and then the half elimination would eliminate this guy. That's all it is. I've made that a little more complex than it is, but that's forced marches. Okay, let's get on to the game. Today we are doing Green Southern Campaign, 1780. And let's just look over the rules a little bit that are specific to the game. First of all, if you look at your reinforcement time record track, you'll notice that there's these little uh, rain markers in December, January, and February. And those mean you cannot cross on the uh, the level two rivers here. That is the ones with the dark blue on either side and then the light blue in the middle. So those are impassable. You can do it on these level three rivers here. 
Victory conditions. The British player wins by keeping all of the following towns free. So you've got to keep Savannah down here, uh, Charleston right here, and uh, Augusta, Georgia up here. Let's see, 96 is up here. And uh, Camden. Camden's right here in the middle, South Carolina. And then finally, uh, Hillsboro, North Carolina. It's uh, right here. So you've got to keep those free of uh, any uh, continental units. The Americans win by occupying one or more of the following towns free of enemy combat units. And that's the same ones except for Hillsboro. They don't have to keep Hillsboro. And any other situation occurring at the end of the game is a draw. So basically the British really need to get all of these towns and just stay in them and hopefully push out the Americans. They'll be fighting a defensive battle on this. Uh, bateaus can be used. I've noticed you don't use them when I've played this too much, but the bateaus are up here on the, uh, up along the Virginia, North Carolina border. So basically they're on the uh, Roanoke River. And you can only use them as ferries. You can't use them as transports. So the other issue with this is that uh, this Charlotte, Virginia force up here can't move until we bring a uh, continental force up here to escort it. So if I'm going to use it, I'm going to have to lose a continental force here in the south and get it up there to bring it into battle, which may or may not be worth it. It's going to take about three, four turns to even get up there and get them back. So that there is that to consider. Um, units can start out entrenched and the uh, supply unit, the British supply unit uh, comes in at Wilmington down here. But if the, uh, if the Continentals control Wilmington, then they can't, the supply unit won't come in. So there is that. Um, I'm going to start the game, since the British are using a defensive tactic here in this game, I am going to entrench them as much as possible. So let's bring in some entrenchments. Here I can bring in one, I can bring in one here, here, and here. It sure, certainly doesn't hurt to entrench as much as possible. Um, oh, now I'm up here. Okay, let's move this to the... Actually, I need a marker for time now. We'll put the time now here for turn one. And this is a pretty short game. Again, I really like this game overall because it can be played in such a short amount of time. And it's really a super easy game to play. I'm really kind of shocked. It was rated as like a middleweight or even a heavyweight game by Avalon Hill back in the day, but it's not. This is this is very simple. I'd say it's probably on the same uh, difficulty as Eastern Front or one of those games. Okay, Brits get to go first. Um, you know, I could... I'm thinking the first thing I could do... One, two, three, four, five, six. I am going to go here and here. And since I have six points... I'm going to move up to Fort, uh, is it Fort Prince George? And I have six to one odds, and I can do an overrun here. Oh, I cannot. One, two, three. Yeah, I can. I can, I can still do an overrun. I just um, can't move on because I don't have enough movement points. So that means this guy is automatically eliminated. And every point of uh, continental point I move is going to be crucial so that's good okay this guy 96 is going to stay put these guys are going to stay put these guys are going to stay put this guy's going to stay put um not much else I can be doing here I do need to get up and get to Hillsboro so somehow I'm going to have to move in there okay it's now turn time for the Continentals. I almost all called them Confederates to move. Now I've got enough points here. I think we're going to attack that magazine. One, two, three. And we are going to... One, two, or one, two, three. Yeah, we'll stay on this side of the river. And we are going to hit him just as hard as we can. One, two, three. Let's see. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Um, I'll tack down here. Georgetown doesn't really matter for anything, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and attack here. And then I'll bring this guy down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can move there. Okay. And that is it for the, uh, conf the Confederate. My Continental, that C-O-N, is getting me. This guy can't do anything. He's useless. Let's do some battles. Okay, so here we've got two to one with a minus one. Let's bring our combat results table over. Man, I wish I could shrink this down just a little bit. So two to one minus one is a four three. Two to one with a three is a defender loses one. Well, that's enough to delete him. I think the Redcoats are gonna have a hard time winning this game. Okay, this one. I have a supply, and so this guy is supplied at three. Um, I should have moved this supply unit somewhere to give the, I still can. Okay, three for the Brits. The Continentals have two, four, six, seven, eight. So two to one odds, both sides are supplied. I will roll at two to one. Oh, are they entrenched? They are not, they should have entrenched. I could do that, I can put an entrenchment and a magazine together, but I didn't, so. Two to one, we roll a three at two to one with a three as an attacker loses one, and a defender loses one, and I have to take off the uh, Militia here, and then he is down to a two. Okay, now the question arises, do I attack back at, well, it'd be one, it'd be greater than one to three, so I can't. The reason why I was saying that is I was trying to attack back and eliminate their, force them to use their supply unit up, but I would lose a magazine in the process, so. I think I'll stay put, but I think that the Americans will go ahead and um, do their second attack. Oh, if they do that, they will lose that supply. That supply is kind of crucial right now. Okay, let's say that's the end of battle there. I don't think the Americans are going to fight back because they don't want to lose that supply here. Not worth it. Too much of a risk. Okay, that is the end of, that was the Americans' turn, and they moved those two. So we moved to the Brits' turn in January. Like I said, this is going to be a short game this week. So um, Brits are going to move one, two, um, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, seven. Okay. We need to get that supply unit moved. <coughs> Excuse me. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to hop. 96 I have to keep. Now, Winsboro I don't have to keep. Um, Fort Prince George I don't have to keep. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these two units together and then give them a supply I'm going to try to make it up to Hillsboro here. It's going to take a couple turns. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the supply unit's going to move up one, two, yeah, one, two, three. We're going to move across the uh, watery river here. If you're from that area, is that how you pronounce it? Let me know. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, six. And then Winsboro. I don't think Winsboro is something I have to keep, so we are going to move out from our entrenchments and move here and here. Move this force. Um, this poor guy, I could give up that supply. I think I'm... Man, he's pretty close to getting just 
wiped out there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy the supply, or destroy that as much as it pains me, and I'm going to get out of there. And I'm going to go over to 96. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and... I could have converted that to a magazine. Okay, instead of deleting that magazine, I'm going to convert to a uh, supply. Let's do that. Um, okay, so that magazine, what I did here was I converted the magazine to a supply and then I skedaddled. I don't think there's any reason I need to keep... Oh, wait. Is that Camden? Ah! Okay, take it all back. Um, bring our magazine back. I'm gonna. I take it all back. We're gonna have to. It's Camden, so it's it's a town I have to keep. I will entrench. Okay, so I've got it entrenched here. Um, Georgetown, I've lost. Okay. That's it. I don't think I'm going to do anything. I'm certainly not going to fight here. I'm going to have to take it defensively. I don't think I'll be able to keep Camden, but I think I can keep keep trying to fight there a little bit. So on the bright side, I think we can. Yeah, I don't think there's much I'm going to be able to do there. Okay, that's the Brit Brit turn. The British go now. The Rebels will go. We will fight here. I think we're going to move to Hillsborough. We're going to race to Hillsborough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe we can block them a little bit. Okay, over here. Two units here and one unit here. We're going to make a move towards... Uh, well, he's kind of isolated. Let's try this. One, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We will attack Charleston. I'm going to take one of these guys. One, two. No, he can't move across there. Man, it's three. Wait, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we're going to move there. We got to be kind of offensive here. And. That's going to be it for movement. Okay, now then, we're going to do our combat here. Okay, now here we have two, four, five to two. So we have two to one odds. Let's get our combat results table here. Oh, come on. Okay, there's our combat results table. Now let's roll. Okay, we got a one. We got a zero there. So zero, it's one. They rolled a one. Minus one is zero. So... Two to one at zero is an, no effect. Okay, nothing can happen and we can't fight back because of the NE. Here we've got one to one odds and it's minus one. Hopefully we can roll. Okay, three minus one is two. Defender loses one. Well, it still hurts the Empire here. We'll just call them the Rebels and the Empire just to give it kind of a Star Wars feel. I like it when I'm doing the uh, talks on that. I say that every once in a while. You get tired of saying the Continentals or the Americans or the British or English or King George's men, the Redcoats, the Lobsterbacks. You need to come up with, I like to use the Empire and the Rebels. Okay, that's it for the turn. I think that was all we could do. So we can move on to turn three. Okay, British turn three, Redcoats turn three, Lobsterback turn three. Yankee Doodles. I'm going to call them the Doodles. Okay, this guy's going to stay put. This guy's going to continue to race to Hillsboro. One, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, 
hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's move there. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave Augusta and come here and here and here. Um, not gonna fight back there, not gonna fight back there, but I'm going to attack here with uh, three to two odds. Three to two, and let's pull up our combat results table with a one. Three to two with a one is no effect, okay? And here we've got uh, nothing, nothing. Okay, here. Three, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight, two. Is that a one? Yep, okay, that's an automatic, automatic withdrawal. So he's eliminated. Okay, so we've eliminated the threat in the north. And that's it. Okay, so we go to our to the uh, rebel turn. Rebels will still attack here. Hmm. Can't do much there. I wish I could pull off again. Oh, I know what I can do. They left their little fort. We're gonna move here. Derp. Okay, so change that to a 96 is now a CA fort. Okay, so we're going to do that with that derpiness. We'll fight here. So two to one odds, minus one. And we roll a one zero. Okay, so the Continentals rolled a zero at two to one, and it's an NE again. Okay, they did that one again. And this has been abandoned, so we can get rid of that. Okay, end of turn there. That's the end of turn. So we move here. Wilmington. Well, Wilmington is supplied, so they can go here. Um, we've made the mistake here. We're going to go ahead and attack these guys. I'm going to try to bring the supply into place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I will put a unit in Hillsboro. I don't think, well, they've got two turns left. Let's put three in Hillsboro. Actually, yeah, let's do that. And then we will move one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Let's see, try it again. One, two, three, four. Wait, these guys are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we're going to move this guy in here. He can move that. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is supplied. Wait, seven. We'll keep them all together. <clears throat> and uh, can't do much here. One to two odds. I don't think I'll try it. The only thing I could get out of that would be rolling a six. Not worth it. Okay. Here we go. We've got three to four. Four. So it's one to two odds. Let's roll it. Six. Hey, one to two at six. DL1. Well, that was productive. I didn't think we could get by with it. Now this is a three, uh, two, three to One to two odds here. Mm, the best I could get was to reduce that by one. It's not worth it there. Um, I think we're good. I think that's going to be all I'm going to be able to do is the Brits. So we move down to the Rebel turn. Oh, I think I'm on this one here. Uh, North Carolina, Virginia border. Okay, get these guys down. Oh, come on. Get me up there. Okay, we are going to get this right there. And, oh, I could go across. I, well, I could go there, activate them. Okay, 
what we're going to do is we're going to go one, two, that immediately activates this guy. Three, wait, one, two, we'll start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This guy will move here, and this guy will move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. We're going to attack there. Um, who else is attacking? 96. Going to stay put. Um, Camden will attack and Charleston will attack. Okay, let's start with Charleston. Two to one, minus one. And two to one minus one is a five, four. Two to one at four is DL loses two. So Charleston is now in continental hands. If you ever have a chance to go to Charleston, do so. It's amazing. Um, so is Savannah. Those two towns are both really incredible towns to go visit. Um, I would say they're almost, you get a better sense of what the town was like in 1776 from say Charleston or Savannah than you would at say Boston. I mean, Boston's still a pretty, Boston's got some really cool stuff, but it's still a big city. They do have Dunkin' Donuts. Let's see. And if you're listening, Duncan, and you want to send some money my way for mentioning you, go ahead. I'm not that big a day. I'm, I'm a daylight donut fan. I don't know if you guys have daylight donuts where you're at, but they taste more like a real donut. Okay. And if you ever saw me, you'd say, yeah, that boy likes his donuts. Not like my wife does, but I'm I'm rattling here. Three to two odds. Three to two with a four deal one. Okay. That's enough. Oh, okay. That deletes him. And then right here we have a three, a five to three. So one to one odds. Okay. One to one with a five. Deal one. So we lose that dragoon here. There's no reason I need to keep fighting here. I can as long as I'm in that hex, then they don't have the British don't have the victory conditions. Okay, we've got one to one odds here. Six. Okay, a six at one to one odds is gonna be a uh DL2. Okay, Defender loses two, so this puts this down to one. Okay. And then see, we've done this. We've done this. Okay, I think we're done for the turn. Let's see. Okay, last British turn of the game. And um, what can we do? There's not... We can try to eliminate them here or make the run. Okay, let's make the run. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going to run here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can't make it. Um, We could attack back here. I thought we could. We could try to dislodge these guys. Okay, I'm gonna try to dislodge these guys here. Um, two, three, four, five, six. I can't make it. I could make it with this. We will try that. And then one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, can't do anything there. Um, we'll try to fight there. Okay, I guess what we're going to do is just make fights in those places. Okay, I got one to two odds here. This is just a do or die kind of thing. It doesn't hurt to try. Um, one to two, and we roll a five. One to two with a five is an AL1, DL1. So. We're going to delete him, and then we'll just delete this guy here. Okay. I don't know what I did there. Okay, here's the big fight. Um, 
two, five, six. Not going to do anything to try to knock out that uh, supply. So we've got two, five, six, two, five. Okay, one to one odds there. And we get a five at one to one. Deal one. Okay, that reduces this guy by one. And then over here, nothing. Let's see. Oh, here we've got a two to three, or one to two odds. One to two at a one is an attacker loses two. So delete and ah, delete. Okay, that is it for the. Uh, that is it for the uh, British. They've lost the game essentially, but we'll play it out. Um, let's see here. I guess we can move in. And here, we really don't have to. Well, we can see if we can eliminate the British. So we've got two, three, four to six, one to two odds. Actually, I don't stand unless I get a six, which isn't going to even do anything. I'm just going to stay put there. Okay, now let's see who wins this thing. Um, so the British wins by keeping all the following towns free of American combat units at the end of April. So there's, I'll put that there. So Savannah, they will have, or no, they do not have Savannah. So they have essentially lost it. Now the American wins by occupying one or more of the following towns free of enemies. Okay, Savannah, they do not have. Charleston, they do have. Augusta, they do not have. They should have moved a unit up here. Um, 96 is British controlled and Camden. But they did get uh, Hillsboro. So I think we actually ended up with a draw. Neither side was able to take it. They should have moved a unit up to Augusta while it was open. That's probably, that would have given, given the uh, Rebels the win on this. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's not a very long game, but uh, it's kind of fun. Next week, I will be doing Yorktown, and then we'll be doing the big campaign after that. Also, if you haven't seen them yet, I've got some uh, battles that come, came from this campaign. I've got the Battle of Savannah, Camden. Uh, let's see, I'm doing Kings Mountain this week. Next week will be... Um, Next week is Calpins, and then we'll do um, Galford. So until then, I will see you guys later.